Box like that, but with a holy field chin. There ain't a situation that I can't win. Only hot shit coming out my pen. Niggas like that nerd rap, I noticed the trend. Simping on records, man, that ain't hood. But when I point it out, man, that ain't. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we back with the first swag science video for the year 2014. And you know, to kick off this bitch, we're gonna do it like this. I'm gonna list the top five fights I want to see in boxing this year. So, you know, I can't do this video later in the year. I gotta do it in January because you already got fights made for this month. But I'll talk about for the rest of the year because, you know, a year is a long time. That's 365 days. So, a lot of these matchups I feel can be made if people humble themselves and really just think about the sport and not themselves as individuals. But I also made fights on this list where they're actually realistic. So you won't see no bullshit like Mayweather Pacquiao or some other shit like that. Or no Provodnikov versus Matisse type of fight. You know, all these fights I think going to be real entertaining, real good. And I explain myself as far as why I chose these fights. So let's set things off. Alright, so the first matchup we have here is pretty obvious. Everybody and their mama should want to see these two fight. Well, let me let me uh, say that in a different way. Uh, everybody who's a real boxing fan should want to see this fight. Uh, you know, nowadays you got people who stand boxers so much, they want them to stay undefeated or, you know, they, they, they don't want them to lose, so they don't want them to take tough fights. So. But yeah, if you are, you know, if you're a real boxer fan, you should want to see these two get it on. The entertainment, the style factor is a 10 for 10 in my book, meaning I think both styles are mesh well to make a real good, entertaining and competitive fight. The importance factor, you know, the significance of the fight is a 10 for 10 because I feel these two are the best in the division. Stevenson, obviously the, the undisputed champion. Kovalev is like the guy right there, right a notch below him, right there, you know. And whenever you got the two of the best fighters in the division, they always should fight each other, you know, keep the sport fresh and going, especially when they're entertaining and, you know, they got a good, decent following and they're bringing that heat. Uh, and last but not least, Every fight I look at, you know, if it's a great super fight that needs to be made, it should always have some type of likelihood of someone getting knocked the fuck out. Now, every fight doesn't need, every good fight doesn't need to end in a, a knockout to be good. But, you know, a lot of super fights, you know, you tend to look at it like, damn, I wonder if someone could get knocked out in that fight. You know, when you try to convince the casuals to see a fight. This is one of those fights where, yeah, as someone's getting knocked the fuck out. Most likely, yeah. I mean, I can see it going the 12 round distance, but yeah, somebody could definitely get knocked the fuck out in this one. So, hopefully, this fight gets made in 2014. On to the next one. Now, Golovkin, aka Triple G, versus Sergio Martinez at 160 pounds, you know, the middleweight limit. That's another fight that I feel if you're a real boxing fan, you should want to see. And once again, just like uh, Kovalev and Stevenson, it's two of the best boxers in the division going head up against each other. Now, you know Martinez is a little past it right now. And, you know, they're in uh, negotiations with Cotto. And Martinez, he's, you know, uh, you know, if you see my videos, I'm real critical of dude in his style. But he's earned his right to have a big fight. So let him go ahead and get that fight with Cotto. I, you know, I still feel he's going to whoop Cotto even at this stage in his career. Just a bad style matchup for uh, Cotto. But after he takes biz he takes care of business with Cotto, he needs to fight fucking Golovkin and, 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 and really, you know, let people know that, yo, this is my division. Because Golovkin's a dude with the hype train behind him, you know, and he deserves some of that hype because, you know, he's been putting in work and doing his thing. But, you know, this is a fight that's real important to both guys. Uh, that's why it rates up high on the importance factor entertainment wise i think they have a good contrast of styles martinez is a boxer puncher the lovekin is a boxer puncher thing is martinez moves a little bit so the reason why it's not a 10 for 10 and just a 9 for 10 because i feel at one point if this fight does get made you know you're gonna see a lot of movement and running from martinez but, you know, that's up for Golovkin to cut the ring down and pressure him and, you know, hey, get your shots off. You know, let them power punters go off. And I feel he's capable of doing that. And I do feel Martinez is capable of 
out maneuvering a glove killing spot so this is what makes the fight interesting you know it's still a good contrast of styles and as far as the somebody getting knocked the fuck out, I could definitely see that happening in this fight. I could see Golovkin wearing him down, or I could see Martinez busting up uh, Golovkin's face where they could get a stoppage, or who knows, he might hit him with one of those left hands Golovkin doesn't see coming, and boom, you know, lights out, my nigga. Hey, anything could happen, so this is one of those fights that really needs to happen in boxing, you know. For the 160 pounds world supremacy and then after that we could sort out the pieces and see who else we could get a, a shot you know like quillen um danny jacobs parole you know but for now you know golovkin martinez that's the fight to make at 160 160 you know i mean so let's go into the next one now now my next matchup is gamboa versus mikey garcia i think this would be a real good fight at 135 pounds Garcia is talking about eventually moving up. It doesn't look like he's going to stay at 130 pounds that long. And uh, Gamboa, he's already at 135. And I believe his last fight was quite some time ago. And, you know, he's been fighting a bunch of people that no one really gives a fuck about. So that's why I feel that this fight is important for both men. Whereas, you know, Gamboa, he needs a good challenge to really step up and, you know, show people that he's worthy of the hype he received years ago. I mean, he's still undefeated. He's still an overall good boxer, boxer puncher. You know, he's fast hands, quick combinations. He could be sloppy at times. He gets hit. He might be a little chinny, but hey, you know, if he defeats Mikey Garcia, this would be a good turnaround fight for his career because right now it's in limbo. It's in a boxing purgatory. Ain't really shit happening with it. And Mikey Garcia, he's been, you know, showing that he's worthy of the praise. Uh, he might be top 10 pound for pound or at least top 10, top 15 pound for pound. And this will show him fighting a different type of style that we're not used to seeing him fight against. Normally, he's been fighting against these uh, slow, plodding type of fighters. But Gamboa, he's a different type of puzzle. He's more athletic and he has a high ring IQ. He can box and move around the ring. Entertainment style factor wise, I think this would be a pretty good entertaining fight. You know, Garcia stalking and applying pressure, counter punching hard, and Gamboa using the ring, move around. Importance factor. It's important for both men, but if this fight doesn't happen and no one's gonna lose sleep over it, but I feel it would be a good fight to have for both guys' career. And if somebody getting knocked the fuck out, it could definitely happen because we saw Garcia get dropped with a punch he didn't see coming in by Rocky Martinez in his last fight. And you know, Gamboa, you know, he's always getting dropped no matter who the fuck he's fighting. So somebody could definitely get knocked the fuck out in this fight. I think it needs to happen. Uh, both guys will get their stock raised if uh, they win. So, you know, let's make this shit happen. Alright, fight number four is Keith Thurman versus Marcos McDonough at 147 pounds, which is the welterweight limit. Entertainment style factor, uh, it's 10 for 10. Their style, you know, I think it will mesh well in the ring. You get like a real good fight. You got two boxer punchers. Although McDonough's more on the brawler side, but he's still a puncher and his boxing skill has gotten a little more refined under uh, Robert Garcia's tutelage. Um, importance factor overall for boxing i wouldn't say this fight is that important but for the welterweight division it's important so yeah let these motherfuckers fight it out uh somebody getting knocked the fuck out mm, highly possible if you look at the last two fights and all the fucking bombs that they throw you're definitely gonna see a real good fight this could be either a main event or a real great co-main event for like a uh, a stat card or a fucking pay-per-view card. But either way, I just want to see this shit happen. So yeah, I don't even have to sell y'all on this fight. You know, you know, this should be a good fucking matchup. Last but not least, we get to James Kirkland versus Floyd Mayweather Jr. And the reason why I kept this fight as the last one I want to talk about Because if it would have been the first fight that I talked about A lot of motherfuckers would have stopped watching the video after that You know, I mean, I know the real boxing fans would have held it down and watched the whole thing But a lot of niggas would have seen this shit like Why he want to see Kirkland and Mayweather fight? Man, you know, Kirkland, you know, he's too big Mayweather ain't gonna fight at 154 no more Yada yada yada, man, fuck this nigga He don't know what he's talking about, man He just want to see Mayweather lose and, you know, all the other bullshit excuses people just, you know, will say or whatever. And, you know, fuck all that shit. I want to see this fight. First of all, 
We know Mayweather Pacquiao ain't gonna fight. You know, I gave up on that dream damn two years ago. That shit just ain't gonna happen. And right now, there's nobody else that really just makes a compelling fight with dude. The Martinez fight ain't gonna happen. I don't expect Floyd to go to middleweight, and I don't think he should. You know, if he wants to, cool. But I'm not gonna get on the dude for not moving up the middleweight. That's cool. I could, I could feel that. You know, I ain't on it like that. You know, I don't want to see him fight Amir Khan. I don't. I'm not interested to see in what fucking role he could knock Amir Khan's glass chin into. Danny Garcia is a deserving candidate for a fight, but right now he doesn't want it. You know, I can understand that. I can respect that because, you know, he wants to, you know, get a little more experience, get better. That's cool. You know, he still deserves the fight, but if he don't want to fight, that's cool. But right now, Kirkland Mayweather, to me, that's the fight to see. First of all, Kirkland, you could really sell this fight. Kirkland been getting screwed over by the boxing community, you know, for the longest, by the powers that be. Now, I ain't going to say he hasn't, he hasn't screwed himself out of shit because he has. But dude, that definitely deserves a title fight. Dude done fought all these eliminators, beat all these contenders. He still ain't got a fucking title fight yet. Yo, Floyd, help a fucking brother out and get his nigga a title shot. That's why I said the importance factor is a 10 for 10. Because who else could you really sell the public on a Mayweather fight? Shoot. You, you show the highlights of Kirkland's fights to a fucking Mayweather hater and they'll be all over this fight because they're going to look at it like, God damn, this, this man Dingo Warrior looking dude, you know, he's southpaw, he pull punches, heavy handed, he's mean, so he does some type of boot camp type of training by a black woman, you know, they badasses, like, I don't know how this fight doesn't sell, this fight could possibly do two million if they really want to do it they could do two million pay-per-view buys if not two million fuck it i'll say 1.5 1.5 then you got the whole he's promoted by 50 cent they used to be friends with mayweather yada yada you got that whole angle you know the uh the beyond access whatever the fucking shit they do now for the uh the promo episodes you know it's gonna be Real interesting, real entertaining. You know, 50 Cent gonna have jokes. Mayweather and them gonna have jokes. Crooklyn gonna keep it simple, but Ann Wolf gonna be talking shit. You gonna be seeing some grueling, damn training activities. It just, this fight is gonna be that fight. I'm telling y'all, but nobody, nobody seems to be talking about it. Nobody cares about this fight. And, and who's coming off more momentum than Crooklyn? And you know. He knocked out Tapia in a fight where they really set Kirkland up to lose that fight. You know, he was coming in, you know, to the other hometown, all that shit. You know, I think he only had five weeks of training with uh, Andrew. But this is a real good fight to see. I think you'll see Floyd really have to dig down deep to win. And that's what you want to see from pound for pound greats and future all-time greats and Hall of Famers. You know, I think Mayweather beats this kid, actually. But I don't think it's going to be easy. And I think uh, Kirkland, he's going to really give Mayweather a good fight, which is what you want to see. You know, think about it. Put put uh, Kirkland and Mayweather as a main event. Put Thurman, McDonough, co-main event. Throw Leo Santa Cruz on there with somebody. Like, uh, how about uh, Mel Reno or whoever the fuck. Um, add somebody else. And you got a good-ass damn pay-per-view card, bro. That's all I'm talking about. A lot of people, I know people going to look at it like, well, you know, I think Kirkland's too big for Floyd, but it's a thing. People, they get up in their feelings when it comes to Mayweather. They want to have their cake and eat it too. On one hand, if you argue about pound for pound fights and, you know, mythical matchups, and you'll say, ah, you know, I think, you know, Tommy Hearns, you know, I think he beats Mayweather. A dude will be like, nah, you know, Mayweather, he'll take his jab away. He'll take the right hand away. He always finds a way to win, yada, yada, yada. But on the same hand, you're like, okay, so you see him, Mayweather has his talent and skill to beat Tommy Hearns, but you don't want him to fight James Kirkland. Come on, what the fuck, man? Yo, let's make this fight happen. You know, I don't want to see fucking American. You know, I don't want to see fucking anybody else. I don't want to see, you know... You know, there's fighters who was less deserving who got this challenge. You, I'm sorry, who got this uh, opportunity to fight Mayweather. You know, let a brother get a chance, Floyd. You know, let Kirkland fight you. And, you know, let's just make this money. I After that, you know, I ain't really got shit else to say, man. You know, top five fights I want to see.